Uh, okay, so I have a whole bunch of notes that we can go over. Most of this got answered, but we'll kind of just go through it by the bullets. Because there were some things that, like, Terry didn't mention, but he did mention to me in, in DMs when we were talking. So uh, the general idea is there's no druid and no ice wyvern. They're going to gatekeep progression using a drip feed for, like, a weekly chapter system for the quests. There's a new squire vendor that's coming in. And the, the big thing is uh, a, a multi-classing system that looks like it's going to be doled out in phases. So I guess we'll just we'll just start from the from the top. There's seasonal rewards when we start. The the druid will not be in the game. The ice wyvern will not be in the game. The ice abyss is not going to be in the game. And the reason for that is because like half of the dev team, including the key members of the team that were responsible for the the level generation and the uh, animating and mechanics of like the boss mobs and whatnot and the druid and their shape shifting were all out sick with COVID. So for the last three weeks, the dev team has been pretty much laid up. That's what set them back. So hopefully we will see those things implemented in the game, you know, within a, a month or so after the patch goes live. Yeah, I would say that like that's disappointing. Obviously, I want to see that stuff in the game, but I want it to work. And like, I would kind of be a jerk if I was like, well, it sucks that they got the flu, but I still want my stuff. And I, I really don't want to be that guy. The, for the new weekly quests, they mentioned that they're going to do like a new chapterized system where they're going to be doling out those weekly quests, a chapterized quest system that's going to drip feed the quest progression to us as opposed to allowing people to go from start all the way to the finish within like a week's time like what we had been seeing. So instead of people having like golden cloaks and whatnot by the end of the first week, it's going to be a much more slow drip progressive system. And the quests are supposed to be a bit easier and a bit faster to get done for the first like few chapters, which I guess come out like right away and then get progressively harder with like rare drop rates and whatnot as time goes on. It looks like they also are increasing the drop rates for a lot of the uh, like wolf belts and whatnot that we've seen that had like really atrocious drop rates. I guess they're going to improve those, but we'll have to see how that plays out, I guess. The Squire system, the, there's going to be a Squire vendor, and then there's this screen cap and this one, and I'll just kind of go back and forth. The idea is that you'll be able to set up presets for whatever you want that starting loadout to be with up to common quality white items. And you will also identify the items that are of too good of quality to go into like a normal dungeon run. So if you're wearing items that are like green or blue or whatever, uh, he will highlight them and you'll automatically be able to like press a button and it will stash those items for you as opposed to having to go around and like hunt for those individual pieces. In the case of this vendor, he's going to have up to common quality items that have been unlocked across each of the other vendors, which makes it sound as though the vendors themselves are going to be like you're going to unlock certain like pieces of armor or weapons or whatever through some of these quests and then they'll be permanently available on the squire once you do them so i i, th I think that's kind of what it sounded like but again it's like one of those things that we'll have to go in and test and see and like look at what the new quests are and all that stuff leaderboard balancing so the ap system was like really abused with min maxing and whatnot uh i, I found it shocking at one point terry said that he watched my youtube video and learned about a mechanic that he wasn't he didn't know that's how it worked, uh, which I, I found to be pretty funny. It just goes to show you that like there's a lot of separation of like roles in the in the office. But they're modifying the AP system. They said that they're going to make it a higher focus on PvP related kills and like adventuring in the dungeon as opposed to like looting like high value treasure and whatnot in the dungeon with a focus on like killing mobs and like killing each other in PvP and opening chests and stuff as opposed to the loot that you're carrying out of the dungeon instead. So it's done. It's a lot more about action rather than collection and i think that that's important uh for the changes that they're making I thought that was good matchmaking and map balancing they are returning to what the old map system was they're going back to the root of it originally and we're talking like playtest 3 originally there was just crypts to inferno and it was a trios map then they decided that they were going to add a uh, goblin cave as a three by three solo experience then a lot of people said that they wanted duos so when they introduced ruins originally it was ruins then crypts then then inferno and that's how the progression went they split ruins off and made that a duo only map once they implemented frost cavern they decided that that was going to be a duo map and then they had these things with map rotations and all this other stuff that they were experimenting with but the problem is 
has become that the population of the game being as low as it is, they're trying to have populated lobbies and still give that experience of what it is that they're trying to accomplish with there being a PvP VE experience, not just a PvE experience with occasional PvP, especially on like lower population servers like you see in OCE and SEA and uh, Japan and whatnot, where there's a lower player base, lower player population, where they have an average of like two players per map because there's so many different like pools of players for all of these different queues. So they're returning to GC being solo, Frost Cavern being for duos, and then Howling Crips and Inferno being for trios. The idea being that if you're a solo or duo player, you can play on any of the higher team count maps if you want to, but you can't go backward. And again, the point about this is like population control and making sure that also map flow is right. Because they also noticed that like the 5x5 five five Goblin Cave map, the map flow was pretty much atrocious and and didn't work out well as far as i'm aware though they're going back to the original like the different three by three gc maps so you're going to have like the, what used to be the hr map and what used to be the normal map and now they're both going to be there at the same time uh with some variants that we saw like before they ended up making the five by five changes and then uh, as far as i can tell frost cavern is going to be untouched so that's going to be a core duo map, which I think is fine. The duos on Frost Cavern should not be that big of a deal. You can clear most of what you're trying to accomplish in Frost Cavern with duos. That should not be an issue. And then trios on Howling Crypts and Inferno. I think that that map has always been tuned for trios. That's how it's always been. The boss fights are obviously ideal for trios. Not to say that you can't go in as a solo or duo. It's just you're going to be working against threes. Okay. And then, uh, and it, you know, and that is what it is. I know that there's a lot of people that are going to be not happy with that. And there's nothing I can do about it. I'm just a gamer. There are, there are absolutely scenarios where I can see that that is concerning. Uh, it, it coming down to player population being like the core of that change and map flow, it sounded like was kind of secondary, is also a little bit concerning. Obviously, you want them to have a good product. They need to work on the quality offering of the product. That's kind of like the, the core piece here. And I think once they're able to get like a lot more of the content that they're trying to get in, you'll be able to see them start like moving away from this idea of like fixing people into these different maps. And I, and I think it'll work out a lot better. So they just need to work on the quality of the product. If it were me, I would stop worrying so much about like, I, I think I would worry less about content related stuff. And I would focus more on like getting the core systems in the game that they want to get in and, and have that be like the, the main focus as opposed to like worrying about like whether or not the map is going to flow a certain way whether or not the player base is seeing enough pvp or if they want to focus on pve or trying to make everybody happy because it's never going to work i think they just need to focus on getting all of the systems in the game that they want implemented and then balance the shit out of them and then they can do content drops to the ends of time it's just people get bored and you know you listen to loud mouths and you don't really know which way to go i think in a lot of times um but it's whatever. All right, uh, class balancing. So uh, Terry wasn't able to get very specific because he's not part of the team that focuses on class balancing. But what we know is that they're modifying a whole lot of and adding a whole lot of, of skills, perks, talents. All of those things are being really looked at and a lot of, a lot of those perks, talents, and skills are being uh, rebalanced. So there, a lot of them are being reworked. We're not exactly sure how. We just know that they're making a large pass of it. And the reason why they're looking at doing that is because they're making a, an, an implementation of a large system that has to do with multi-classing that kind of looks like this. So their implementation of the training system is the idea where they are removing the level cap and you'll be able to level up infinitely to 9999 or whatever. We don't know how much XP there's going to be in between levels. Uh, Terry did tell me that they're capping off the, um, the XP gain uh, after level 20. So from 20 to 21 will be the same amount of XP as 21 to 22 and so on and so on. So after level 20, whatever the, the XP amount is to get to the next level will be the same from every level there on out. Every so often, there's going to be a break point that's going to get you either a reward token or what's called a learning token. In order to get a learning token, your character has to be over level 100. Once that happens, they get a learning token. In order for the learning token to be utilized, though, there's either a complete RNG mechanic or you level a second character to level 100 or a third or whatever and then those characters become what he referred to as masters and those those characters then can teach their skills or abilities whatever to another character in your stable by spending one of those tokens so to put this another way, if I had a barb over level 100 and a rogue over level 100, I can use a learning token on the barbarian 
and then select the rogue to learn from and then potentially teach myself hide. But it's done using RNG, very similar to how like Slay the Spire works or how Vampire Survivor works, where when you get to those level breakpoints, you get a number of choices. In this case, they're saying three. It will be three random choices that you are able to choose from. You pick one of those skills or abilities to learn, and then you will have learned it on that character. That skill or ability is unlocked permanently uh, for that character and cannot be in the next series of choices should you so choose to go for like another skill or ability from that other class. So if I learned hide, if I got lucky and hide was on the list and I was able to learn hide on my barb, if I went for another skill, I would never see hide as an option ever again on my choices if I decided to spend a learning token. The other tokens, the reward tokens are for like random items. Now there's, there's like a lot of unknown with whether or not uh, perks are included, but based on the description, it doesn't sound like perks are. It sounds like it's like skills and then spells. And I know that, again, talking to Terry and DMs, we talk specifically about skill usages and spells, which also includes things like bard songs. So there has to be some amount of like ability to use, let's say, instruments or a longbow or whatnot, because during the podcast, Terry also mentioned that there was the potential ability to use a longbow, getting something called longbow mastery, which isn't currently like a like a talent or anything that anybody can learn. So there's going to be some amount of like generic learning that is capable for each character as they level by using those learning tokens to teach them how to be able to use like instruments from a bard, for instance, um, or hold a spell book or whatever that I'm guessing is also going to be an RNG system. And a lot of people from when we were doing the Q&A, they were not pleased with that. And that system on paper looks like it's really big and involved and scary. A lot of people don't like the RNG. So there's a lot of concerns there, obviously. The multi-classing piece of that is not going to be implemented in the game like right away. They're going to be working into that. So this is like the first phase of them rolling out that training system. My guess would be is by the time that a couple of people have been able to get to like level 100 or whatever and start amassing tokens, that they will be just about ready to throw the switch on it for everybody to do it. Because I don't think getting to level 100 on a character is going to be like super duper fast. It's probably going to take the hardcores a couple of days to get a, to get a character to like level 100 plus, but we'll have to see. It, with with that also comes XP bouncing with the you know for if we're talking about all the grinders so they're looking at um, some type of diminishing return mechanic for the guys that are grinding out like a bajillion levels worth of XP like in a short period of time they said that like the guys that are logging really long gaming sessions are typically the people that have a lot of experience and are capable of generating experience to the tune of like 20x the rate of like the normal player base and they're also typically gaming for a gaming session that is 8x that of the average player base on average in duration so they're 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 better at generating XP and they're on in the game for longer significantly longer so they're trying to curb the rate at which those people are able to like get further and further ahead by implementing some form of diminishing return mechanic on the long gaming session xp generation i don't know exactly how that looks and i don't think terry does either he's trying to work out some formulaic stuff to make it make sense for everyone i expect that this is likely going to be something that gets tweaked a lot and they're also talking about looking at implementing something for like a catch-up system for xp for people that aren't around that much like a rested xp system like you would see in wow or something along those lines and then in addition to that they also said that they were implementing uh items with hybrid primary stats and uh in a gift code system so that you could gift the game to your friends and then uh, they, we talked about Twitch drops, and they said that they weren't going to be implementing a Twitch drops things yet. They're they're looking at maybe doing a marketing push in like you know three to six months, something like that, like further down the line, maybe for like the next season. I think that was pretty pretty much it. Yeah. So it, it looks like it looks like on on paper there isn't a whole lot in here. But that multi-class system, if it ends up working right, would actually create a very, very diverse set of builds in the game. And obviously people would start finding like crazy meta things to be able to mess with and all that other stuff. Whether or not it ends up working the way that they're hoping it will, and whether or not things are like horribly broken is something that obviously is going to have to get like looked at, I guess. But that's that's pretty much the long and short of it. I think that that, that pretty much covers the entire podcast. I will say this. There were people that were uh, unhappy that I didn't like kind of 
ask more involved questions of Terry as to like why they were motivated behind what it was that they were doing and it, or, or like, you know, trying to hit them a little bit harder than I did. And that, that's not my job. In this case, my job is just to get information and get it out to people. In the context of that podcast, I don't think it would have been appropriate to try and like ask them challenging questions. And I, and I don't think that it would have been fair to them to do that, especially given like the context and him saying that they were already sick and all this other stuff. I don't think that would have been fair of me to do. There's a time and place to be challenging about those kinds of things. And when we're doing a podcast about like the next patch rollout, like that's not the time or place, I don't think. And there's people that are going to disagree with me that about that. And that's fine. Um, but it's, it's my show and I'm going to run it the way I want to. And for the record, I do challenge them. I send them DMs about concerns that I have all the time. I'm just not going to do it with some like stupid soundbite take that's going to try and end up being like some weird dark and darker viral clip. It doesn't make sense for me to try and do that. Like I got a job to do. I'm just trying to get information out there. And if people don't like the way I handle it, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm doing the best I can and I'm trying to learn. So if you don't like it, you don't like it. It is what it is. But yeah. Anyway, um, I think that pretty much covers all the notes. Um, yeah. Okay. All right. Mm, bye.